They said, who is more stronger than we are? Who is stronger than us? And Hud is saying, all of you fight me now. Fight me now. Fakiduni jami'a. All of you fight. Destroy me if you can. And they couldn't destroy him. They couldn't do anything to him. And he said, Inni tawakkaltu ala Allah. I've placed my trust in Allah. Rabbi wa Rabbukum. My Lord and your Lord. Anna Allah alladhi khalaqahum. The one who created them. Allah who created them. Huwa ashaddu minhum quwa. That he is more powerful than them and more superior than them. They said, bring us what you're promising us, i.e. the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you're telling the truth. Now we're talking about nations destroyed. Not just two people, three people. An entire nation where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wipes them all out. The wind started picking up and started to scream. Allah destroyed everything. Allah Ta'ala, the people of Hud, the nation was called Ad, and the specific Qabila, the specific like family tribe that Hud السلام, was sent to, they were called Iram. Their location was a location called Al Ahqaf, between the sandy hills, windy and sandy hills, and it was between Yemen and between Oman in this area. These people. They were the first people to worship idols after the destruction of the people of Nuh After the flood, the people were on Tawheed. They worshiped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first people to introduce the idols back into the worship were the people of Ad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the people of Ad that they were extremely, extremely powerful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Surah Al-Fajr is really beautiful, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testifying by the daybreak. Again, testification, Allah is swearing. Every time you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala testifying, you should look for what is the jawab al-qasam. Why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala testifying? And interesting in Surah Al-Fajr, jawab al-qasam, as they say, is mahdhuf. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't say for what reason He testified. Someone may say, it's a question. Isn't there an enormous testification in these things? The sun and the ten nights, all of these things. Isn't this an enormous testification? For the person with intellect, the person with a brain. If you have intelligence, this is a huge testification. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Haven't you seen what Allah did to the people of Ad? Haven't you seen it? Didn't you see what Allah did to them? What is Jawab al Qasim? Jawab al Qasim is this that if someone turns their back on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will destroy them. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anybody in their tyranny and their aggression and the and the dhulm that they do to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when people think dhulm, they're only thinking, well, what injustice did they do? Number one injustice is to worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the number one injustice. There is no injustice greater than for a person to worship other than Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bih. Allah will never forgive someone who associates partners with Him. Allah will never forgive them in the hereafter. In the hereafter, they will never be forgiven. If someone does tawbah to Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah will forgive them in the dunya. But if they die on that sin, they will never be forgiven. In fact, the messengers were commanded to not pray on those who died in shirk. You can't even make dua for them because they died as kuffar, mushrikeen. You can't make dua. That is the greatest dhulm. And when someone does dhulm and turns their back on Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah Azza wa Jal will destroy them. Either in this dunya or they will be held to the hereafter. And the hereafter is much more intense in the punishment than anything that they would, anything that would happen to them in this dunya. 
And in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alam tara, haven't you seen what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did to the people of Ad? Iram that al Imad. Iram, the specific family of Iram, that al Imad, the people who build lofty towers, lofty columns. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alati lam yukhlaq mithluha fil bilad. They had no one in comparison to their power. There was nobody in comparison to their power. Now when we talk about power, what does it mean to have power? What does it mean to have power? When you see people, when they want power, they'll do one of three things. They will either go to the gym, right? They'll either go to the gym because they want power. They think it's like power is like right here in this bicep muscle. All power is harnessed right here, right? This is one type of power. Number two power, a second type of person will try to make a billion dollars because they want financial power. They want to buy, 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 all of this stuff, right? And the third type of person, when he thinks power, he says, let me run for political position and let me become king of the world and get political power. Dear brothers and sisters, what type of power did Ad have? They had all the above. They had all of it. Not only that, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allati lam yukhlaq mithluha fil bilad. Nothing like them was created in the land. It's been narrated that it was so strong, so big, that one of them will grab a palm tree with his hand and pull it off. Pulling a palm tree with your hand? You need a bulldozer to take a palm tree. For some to grab, from one person to grab it and take it off. 50 people together probably not even can't even take a palm tree from its roots. So they were very strong people. They were very tough people. They were so strong that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِذَا بَطَشْتُمْ بَطَشْتُمْ جَبَّارِينَ And when you have war, when you fight, you fought with pride. They ruled. They ruled all the lands, all the lands around them. That's how strong they were. No one could face them. No one could stand against them. They were very strong and tough people. They used to build palaces in the mountains, although they never used to live in the mountains. They used to live on the flat land. They used to build those palaces in the mountains, so unique palaces for the sake of fun. They used to build them just for the sake of fun. No palaces were ever made like that. And some scholars say, even to the day of judgment, no palaces will ever exist like the ones they had. They had wealth that was so enormous. They had so much luxury. Not only did they have the money, they had the offspring and the families to, uh, to build that wealth. And they had the livestock and they had the agriculture and they had the gardens and they had the rivers that flowed through those gardens. They had luxury to the highest level. So much so that they used to build buildings and they would never live in them. They would find a huge mountain and they would just build something up there, a huge castle. Someone would pass by and they would say, who built this castle? Who lives there? Nobody lives there, but it belongs to Ad. There's another castle there up on the mountains, huge and mighty. Who lives there? Nobody lives there. Who built it? Ad built it. And so they would just build this, just playing games. Their excess wealth, they would just build this. And political power, nobody could stop them. They would go anywhere and any law that they said was the law. Because of their power, because of their physical power, because of their political power. So much so that Ad said, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala records their statement. They said, and it's interesting, how many things and how many people have been destroyed by similar statements? They said, Men ashaddu minna quwa. They said, Who is more stronger than we are? Who is stronger than us? The most powerful nation. Who is more powerful than us? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Don't they see that Allah the one who created them has more power than them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa ila adin akhahum huda. Hud alayhi salam was from their tribe. 
He's from their tribe. So when you think of a messenger sent to a people, you might be thinking that all of a sudden some foreigner comes who has like different skin color, different language and says, hey, can someone translate for me? And gives them a message. This is not the case. He is from them. Hud was from this tribe of Ad, and we can then understand that Hud had a strong, enormous body, alayhi salam, and was very handsome. He was from them speaking in their tongue. These people, as we said, they worshipped idols, and they specifically worshipped three idols. They specifically worshipped three idols. The names of the idols were Suda, Samud, and Hara. The Prophets والسلام, you know exactly what the statement they said was. Worship your Lord, you have no God except Him. Hud والسلام, was then giving this message to the people of Va'ad. They responded. They disbelieved in Hud والسلام, They disbelieved in Him. The Messenger spoke to them again and 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 again. Hud was from the people of Ad. Allah Azza wa sent him as a prophet and a messenger. He told his people, worship Allah Azza wa Jal. There is no other Lord for you except to worship him subhanahu wa ta'ala. So fear Allah Azza wa Jal. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Leave the worship of these idols. Remember what Allah Azza wa Jal had given you. Remember what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had bestowed upon you. Remember what Allah Azza wa Jal had given you. As Allah Azza wa Jal also says in the Quran al-Kareem, and remember what Allah had made you as Khulafa, successors after the tribe of Nuh. And He had given you strength, physical, strong physical bodies. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that in the Quran al Kareem. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned what Allah had granted them from the strength and the power. They had everything. They had palaces, they had houses, they had power, strength, health, wealth, families, respect, honor, civilization, knowledge. They had all that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Hud to remind them. Thank Allah Azza wa Jal for what Allah Azza wa Jal had bestowed upon you. Then associate someone else with the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Worship Allah and only Allah. They start to mock Hud alayhi salam. The way the tribe of Nuh used to mock Nuh. They used to make fun of him. So they start to make fun of Hud. Wouldn't Allah send someone beside you Hud? Who are you to come and tell us what to do? Can't you look at our strength? Can't you look at our power? Can't you look at our civilization? The leaders of his tribe said, We see you being foolish. Oh, Hud, we see you as a foolish man. And we think you're a liar making up some lies on our Lord. Hud responded back, said, There is no foolishness in me. I'm only a messenger from the Lord of this universe, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I convey the message of Allah to you. I'm only a good advisor and sincere advisor to you. I just want to warn you from a severe punishment that will come. Do you find it amazing that Allah sent one man from a monkey to remind you? And the more he calls him to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the more they become stubborn against the call of Allah. And the more he reminds him about the tawheed, the more they get against the tawheed. The more he reminds him about the favors of Allah upon him, the more they turn against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the more they mock and make fun of Hud alayhi salam. To the stage they said, Can't you look how strong we are? Who is stronger than us? Even your own Lord is not even stronger than us. And so these people, they disbelieved. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Ad disbelieved in the messengers. Now notice, how many prophets did they disbelieve in? How many prophets? All of them. Why all of them? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they disbelieved in Hud alayhi salam, but because they disbelieved in one of the messengers, all the messengers have come with the same message. And so they disbelieved in all of them. And so a disbelief in one of the messengers is a disbelief in all of the messengers. And so we understand from that what? And there's this, this new thing happening where people are saying, well, as long as you believe in Moses, it's okay. As long as you believe in Jesus as a prophet, which they don't, but it's okay. That's not true. If someone disbelieves in any messenger, they've disbelieved in all of the messengers. 
<clears throat> that's number one. You will see that the people of Ad were extremely skillful and they were extremely intelligent, except when it came to matters of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were, and, and I thought to myself, if they had a Nobel Prize a third time, they'd probably win it. Right? These people are extremely intelligent, extremely skillful, except when it comes to the matter of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so when you see nations, if you go and travel, you go to these, you know, traveling from nation to nation tourism, where do you visit? Most of these locations that you are visiting are nations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed. If you went to the pyramids, for example, and I know Egyptians are all excited about the pyramids and so on. You're looking at their tombstones. This is where they were destroyed. And you go to another place and you're looking. I remember I went to uh, Al-Batra. How many people have been to Al-Batra, Petra in Jordan? Anybody been there? Jordan, Petra, nobody? Okay. Petra, and we'll be talking about uh, the people of Thamud. This, these are not the people of Thamud, but very similar. In Petra, there is a castle carved into the mountain. There's a castle carved into the mountain. Just type Petra on Google Images, you will see the castle carved into the mountain. When we were there, as you're traveling through all this mountainous range, there was a tour guide. And he was, a, we didn't you know, hire this tour guide, but he was just walking with us and he wanted to just explain some of what we were seeing. And I remember him clearly, almost as if these words kept, like there was a highlighted marker on it. He said, look at these people over here, they were destroyed by. And look at these people over here, they were destroyed by. And over here on this mountain, and you'll notice this crack here, they were destroyed by. And I just kept hearing that. That yes, they were a huge and powerful nation. And yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed them with things that no one was blessed with, even till today. But Allah destroyed them. And so even though a person is skillful or intelligent, shaitan can still deceive that person. Shaitan can still deceive the person. These verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and you'll find this, 2938. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, And as for Aad and Thamud, and clearly will appear to you from the traces of their buildings, their fate. What happened to them? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that shaitan made their sins beautiful to them. And so they were blocked from the straight path. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa kanu That they indeed were still, even though they were gifted with intelligence and skill. Even though this happened, shaitan still misguided them. That that intelligence and skill is not enough. The person has to go deeper to their heart to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that Ad claimed to be the greatest nation on earth, the strongest. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and as for Ad, they behaved arrogantly. And you want to underline that, arrogantly. What does being arrogant mean? It's when a person thinks that there is no strength above their strength. When they claim that any type of knowledge that they have is from themselves. And so anytime a person attributes that intelligence and skill to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they've become arrogant. They have to turn it back to Allah Azawajal and thank Allah for the ability to have this knowledge come to them. All of this, you open up the internet, you're like, Alhamdulillah, that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala gave us this technology that can be used for good or can be used for bad. They said, Man ashaddu minna quwa, who is stronger than us in power? Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says, Awalam yarau, don't they see? And you notice that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is telling us again and again and again, open your eyes and pay attention. Awalam yarau, don't they see? The one who created them, Allah who created them, that He is more powerful than them and more superior than them. You will see in their arrogance to Hud alayhi salam, they wanted a sign. They wanted a sign that if you're telling the, uh, the truth, then bring us a sign. This is what the nations did. They're asking in arrogance. And what will happen when the sign comes to them? They will disbelieve in it. And after the disbelief, what will happen? 
they will be destroyed. The people of Ad, you know what their sign was that they wanted? They said, bring us what you're promising us, i.e. the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you're telling the truth. We want to see a sign. Yes, what is the sign? We want Allah to destroy us. And then we'll believe. And that's exactly what they got. But it wasn't at that time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in one of the verses, speaking about Ad, and with the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they used to make mockery. Now we're talking about nations destroyed. Nations, an entire nation, not just two people, three people, an entire nation where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wipes them all out. Wipes them all out. Do you see any remnants of Ad? Do you see any remnants of them? In fact, there's like some archaeological uh, discoveries and so on. If you read um, Parish Nations by Harun Yahya, it's a very nice book. And there's this picture in his book where he shows the lofty towers of Ad from satellite. It's under the ground. It's under the ground. And the only reason all these scientists are so excited about this discovery, because Allah mentioned them in the Quran. That's why everybody's excited. And they said, is this the Ad, Ad in al-Ula that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed? Just the remnants of them. They asked for the punishment to be brought to them. We're not going to be punished. It's going to punish us. We're too strong to be punished. We're too powerful to be punished. We're too big to be punished. We're too rich to be punished. We're too strong. Who could punish us? We are Qawmaad. We are those with strength and pride. We are those with power. We are those with greatness. Who could punish us? Even your own Lord can't even punish us. When Hud realized that his people are so stubborn, full of pride, they're not going to change. He challenged them. He said, I witness and you witness that I am, that I am innocent and free from what you believe in. I believe in Allah. You want to associate someone else with him? Do so, but I am innocent. I've got nothing to do with what you do. And let me see what you could do to me. Don't even wait. Don't even give me time. He said, Fakiduni Jamian. He said, All of you, how powerful was Ad? There nobody was created like them. And he said, All of you fight me now. Fight me now. Fakiduni Jamian. All of you fight, destroy me if you can. And they couldn't destroy him. They couldn't do anything to him. And he said, Inni tawakkaltu ala Allah. I've placed my trust in Allah, Rabbi wa Rabbukum. My Lord and your Lord. And then he made dua on his people the way Nuh made dua on his people. He said, Qala Rabbin surni bima kathabun. Oh Allah, give me victory over what they denied him. Ya Allah, give me victory over the lies they lied on me. Ya Allah, give me victory, ya Allah, give me victory and support over the denies and over the rejection they rejected. Ya Allah, give me victory and support over, the, over what they've rejected from my call. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded back. He said, Amma qaleel, la It's only a short moment where they're all going to regret. As Allah Azza wa Jal says, when He wants to destroy our nation, فَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ أَبْوَابَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ Remember this, my brothers. Remember this, my sisters. When Allah wants to destroy our nation, Allah will open up all the joy of this dunya. When Allah wants to destroy our nation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open up everything on them. Money, take. Women, take. Men, take. Strength, take. Take, take, take. Until they are relaxed and comfortable. And they're in a, in a state of joy and happiness. That's when we suddenly take them. Destroy them. When someone says they're almighty, all-powerful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send them. If you notice how people were destroyed, they were destroyed with the wind. Someone will see beautiful wind and they're like, Oh, mashallah, there's a beautiful breeze. Turn up the wind and it becomes destructive. Someone will say, we're in Canada here and like, oh, we want some sunlight. We're like a little bit of sunshine. And once that sunshine has turned up, it becomes destructive. 
Some people like to go swimming. But just dip your nose into the water and you could drown and it becomes destructive. All of these elements of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Junoodullah. They are the armies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah created them. They're at the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All Allah azza wa jal has to do is tell the rainwater to stop coming. All Allah azza wa jal has to do is command the earth to pull the water further down. And the people will have no ability to touch it. And when there is no water, bring me the biggest nation. And if there is no water, what will happen to them? There is no water to drink. The livestock, you won't be getting your burgers anymore and your chicken, they're not coming because there was no water for the livestock. And the land will dry up and the people will die. And so this is what happened to the people of Ad. For three years, there was a drought that befell them. And so they said, who's stronger than us in power? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took the water away from them. The people of Ad, whenever something like this would happen, they would go out and they would pray to the idols. They took out 70 men. They took out 70 men and they went to pray to the idols. And they had like their Amir and they're calling to the idols, calling for rain. And it is said, and this is in the history books, it is said that three clouds were appeared to them. The clouds, as they were praying to the idols, it was said to them, a red cloud, yellow cloud and a black cloud. And it said, which of these clouds do you want? And the Amir of them said, we want the black cloud. Because the black clouds carry the most rain. They returned to their people and it was a sign of, you know, that um, Allah, you know, their idols and Allah and they would worship idols and they would say that this is a sign that God was, you know, had been very generous to them and they were very noble in the sight of God. Look, we've brought the rain clouds. And they came back to their people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Reehum fiha adabun azim. It was a wind. Once the people came back, initially, when they saw the rain clouds, they said, They said, this is This is like the, the rain clouds. They're going to bring rain to us. They saw the weather. And they said, they rejoiced that now the rain is fine. They were in a drought for all these years. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bal huwa Rather, it is that which you were trying to hasten. What were they trying to hasten? The punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But nobody can hasten the punish of Allah. punishment of Allah. Nobody can hasten it. It has its time. And now, initially they thought that it was going to bring rain. And they say that there was a woman amongst the people of Ad who felt something different. And she said, this isn't a rain cloud. The wind started picking up and started to scream. And it became violent. And even though the people of Ad were enormous and large and built very well fortified places, if anybody just stood up, the wind would snatch them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the wind for seven nights and eight days. How quickly would they be killed? Probably just in a few minutes they'd be destroyed. Seven nights and eight days. Allah destroyed everything. He wiped them from the earth. They were like a tree that had been chopped down. It was said that they would be lifted up and they would be smashed down on their heads and all their limbs would be out like roots like that. They were all destroyed. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَهَلْ تَرَى لَهُمْ مِنْ بَاقِيَةً Is there any remnants of them? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, تِلْكَ umma. This was a nation. لَهَا مَا كَسَبَتْ Where is Ad right now? They have gone to what they have attained. وَلَكُمْ مَا كَسَبْتُ And you will go and you will journey on to what you are accumulating now. You are planting seeds. Here today you have planted a seed. Tomorrow you will be planting more seeds. And you will journey to 
the fruits of these seeds and what comes from them. And Allah Azza wa Jal will never ask you on the day of resurrection about the people of Ad. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will ask you about yourself. The people of Ad were not thankful to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and so let you be thankful to Allah Azza wa Jal. The people of Ad were arrogant to Allah Azza wa Jal, so Allah disgraced them. Let you and myself, all of us, be humble for the sake of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. They had so many luxuries. Yet they didn't spend from that. They didn't act the time, the well, all of that. They didn't use it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so if it's not going to be them, then let it be you. Zakumallah.